Okay, so once again, I welcome you. Uh, a little info about myself. I work in a mobile car for around, right now, three years. I work as a test consultant in the area of test automation, test design frameworks, a couple of that. Also doing some security research about mobile, about penetration testing. How many of you have something to do with the penetration testing? Raise your left hand. That's great. That working? Oh, come on. I do not be. Oh, OK. There are three guys. Four or five. OK, cool. So, uh, security researcher, also so development of operations for the continuous development, continuous testing, blah, blah, blah. It's boring. I will go to the main area. I've divided this talk in a three parts. First, the, this presentation. Second, the demo workshop. Guys ask me if I would need to connect to the Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> I do not need. It. You will also avoid that after the demo, what will happen. And five to 10 minutes about the Q&A, where I will give you those two mugs for questions you will ask. So basically, in mobile area, uh, we have three of vectors that every attacker would approach. Excuse me. Uh, one of those is device treat vectors. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? Does anybody can tell? Do not be shy. Ask. OK, nobody wants. Uh, what does it mean? It means that, that our mobiles are always on. I personally, I do not know anybody that came going back to home and he's turning off his mobile computer. Oh, computer is more prob probable. But uh, mobile is always on. Uh, there are, as you may know, many software vulnerabilities, uh, like um, possible something that can be achieved outside of your, uh, of your, sorry, I forgot, the stress. I'm glad to see you all, but I'm so stressed up. <laughs> okay. Uh, the software vulnerabilities uh, to hack your cell phone, to do something with that, to achieve, to escalate some privileges, and portable form factor that uh, somebody could switch your phone, somebody could switch your computer, and by this he can inject you something Suspicious. Second is human hacking vectors. Basically, in every company, there is, I would say it in Polish, Pani uh, Krisha, which will open every email, which will open everything that is possible to do to see. Uh, what else? Um, Poland is a, that country that uh, I see many of people use jailbreaks, use routing factor to achieve more of their devices. I know for the development, unlocked device is cool. It's what, can, what we are working on. But as an end user, I do not like to jailbreak my device to, I don't know, download some navigation data application or something else. Uh, and by that, by jailbreaking for Android, we can download unsigned or signed with a different key application for the iOS, we can use Cydia to download. Basically, we do not know what is inside of the application. I will show you later how to embed additional payload for that. And if this end device is from the company, basically by doing this, we can expose all the business data that somebody else can get, transform, modify, and at last, there are network-based threat vectors. What does it mean? It does that if there is some guy who wants to poison all network with some stuff to create rook access point or uh, sniff some data. Basically, it's easy to do that. Probably all of you know how to sniff data. 
And in last, there are many in the middle vectors. What does it mean, man in the middle? <coughs> Basically, man in the middle, mm, we are transforming, we are rerouting, we are mangling roads, different things. And inside of the man in the middle, there are a couple of approaches that we can do f to achieve our, uh, let's say, Shangri-La. One of them is client-side attacks. Client-side attacks means that, that uh, by modifying, we can bypass some authentication. Uh, we can expose uh, additional data. Uh, we can grab... Many times I saw that in the production line, there were uh, deployed software with the debug mode on, that application throws everything inside the network. Mm, based on that, we can get some keys to get into network or escalate some privileges to do that. The second side is server side. Uh, this area is this era is like uh, everything is in the cloud at this time, but many of the solutions that are created are not so cool. I don't mean that they are bad, but they are not so cool. Because like the old protocol, SMTP, ST, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, if you would sniff that with the Wireshark, you see the login and password in the clear text. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, from the testing area, improper input validation, uh, like SQL injection, we can use by double underscore to see what table is currently used, yeah, and the old bug that is uh, visible. Cacheable responses. One of the coolest things that I have in my career, I saw that we were working on an application, mobile and embedded side with the cloud stuff, and one of the uh, lead developers embed the, I'm sorry, embed uh, the main hash key, because the login and password was uh, transformed into hash key that was stored and handled to communicate with every device that were connected to the cloud platform. And uh, the lead developer embedded and stored in the kubekey the whole hash that was valid for about 10 years, declared as that. Basically, based on that, if someone would scan uh, the stuff that was in this web browser, would get that and communicate with the embed with them uh, with the mobile. And this is another thing that lack of the adequate session. As it was written in the brief that at this time everybody knows how to get into some Wi-Fi network. Basically the tutorials are a bunch of on YouTube everywhere and my mom doesn't know how to secure the network. Oh my God, turn it on and it works. Yeah, but mom, you're using your bank account. You're talking with your friends. Imagine that, that somebody will throw to your friends on Skype, so data, that you're dead. I think that my aunt would be great, yeah. Oh my God, your mom is dead. No, it isn't. She stands here. Hmm. But yeah, this is another thing. And man in the middle, once we are in the middle, we could sniff the data. We can hijack the traffic, the session, modify the payload. There was some banking incident like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, that one of the bank was using all encryption uh, session. And based on that, uh, attackers could sniff the encrypted data and a couple of identifi identifiers was the same, like session, session handshake, transaction, session ending. Based on that, they compared that and they saw that, uh, okay, let's try to hijack that. They reroute, hijack that, modify the payload, 
And based on that, uh, banks start to use Cypher blockchain changing protocol uh, on the SSL layer 3, version 3, uh, to avoid that. Basically, Cypher block changing, the CBC, is uh, old stuff, uh, but 10 years ago, they didn't know that. Filtering, we could redirect. Uh, how many of you use Facebook, use Twitter? I think everybody that is in this place. Yeah. So there are some social engineering tools that if we are in the middle, in the network, we can redirect all data regarding the domain A, facebook.com, twitter.com, and create a malicious website that will store your credentials and to avoid your attention that something is going wrong. Automatically after that, after you input your credentials, redirect to the main domain. We could modify the payload. You will see on the demo that using open Wi-Fi is uh, not so great if there is some guy that would do some bad things. Injecting. Uh, we could inject our stuff, what we want to achieve. Uh, MS chap authentication, modification. We could uh, modify the whole session transaction. One of the banks that I was preparing for this talk, uh, I didn't saw that I connect my demo laptop to my own network, and my wife was doing um, some bank payments, and I saw that the session was hijacked. How so? They're using strong encryption protocols. Yeah, but not all of them are protected. And based on that, we could manipulate website data, all traffic. Um, basically, only your imagination blocks you from doing stuff that is possible to do with the security layer. <coughs> there are a couple of things um, that can be done on a man-in-the-middle transaction. So network guys probably know, uh, for other I will try to, if somebody do not understand any of it, just raise your hand. Okay, which one? <laughs> ah, you were the fast guy, I was start to translating thing. Okay, so ARP poisoning, address resolution protocol. Uh, it works on the network layer that Mm, I will show later on the demo. Uh, basically, our device, when starts booting up, connect to network, ask who has something, AP address, domain, and router bridge responds to that. Uh, <coughs> DNS spoofing. That's what I said on the Facebook redirection modification, that in local network, if we create a rook AP, we could spoof that, hey, we are the facebook.com, come on to us. Ah. Come on to us, we will show you, you can log in. STP, this is from the routing, I will not start to tell you about that because the time is too low. Port stealing, also the stuff that we could uh, hijack some port on your machine to modify the connection that is going to that port. Local to remote. We could deploy agents, it's called PVOTink, to do the R poisoning, DNS spoofing, uh, DHCP, DHCP I think that everybody knows, ICMP, IRDP, root mangling. Root mangling is the, let's say, hardest part because this implicits the uh, switches and routers that we could reroute all the stuff from your network to some to any, anywhere else that we want. And remote, uh, we can tunnel all traffic, like the VPN, to our hideout, then see what's in it, then push it back. Root mangling, the modification. Uh, RPO poisoning and DNS spoofing. Mm, there is a one company which produce operating system Solaris which to this day 
they says that there is no some there is nothing like ARP. It's okay that our table is on, but yeah, we do not use that so many times, so we don't know too anything about it. Um, basically, due to the fact that ARP is so old, like SMTP or PSTN, plain old telephone service, uh, we can craft packets without hesitation on every la layer, and based on that, you will see that on the demo, what is happening in the network, how it acts. Also, we could uh, request attack against intrusion detection system. The idea is that our IT guys in our companies create fortify whole network from the outside, but if we are inside, there are so many companies that you are going into, this is called the information security, uh, other stuff from the penetration testing. And you're in the kitchen, you see the guest network, okay, you could log in. But there are companies that do not segment the networks and you can get every data from production line, from the CIs, even from the domain controller, because IT guy didn't know that he should produce in that or that way. I don't say that's bad, but every one of us train, learn still something. <laughs> and yeah, protecting from that. How it looks, the ARP poisoning. Basically, this is our mobile, our computer, our TV, our IoT device. We are connected to our switch that is standing on desk, in a I don't know, on the corridor, the router, the same thing, the internet. What happens with the attacker? Attacker floats the network with the ARP requests, and based on that, that ARP is, let's say, it's stupid, but based on that, nobody was, would see that uh, something's going on, and the victim machine response to the attacker that, hey, please tell me what's the net address or what's the domain. And then uh, the attacker, it starts to act as a router and send information to the switch to the router, injecting some to the sensitive data that we are requesting for, some additional data. Based on that, we can sniff everything. Any questions? Come on, you can win the mag. Okay, later on. Okay. How we can protect? It's easy. It's easy as that, that I was sitting in the side of the IT engineer. He was using Windows machine with the asset antivirus internet shield. I was producing the attack as a demo and on his machine pop up an information that, hey guy, the our spoofing is going on. Oh, some pop-up, close it. Well, yeah. Basically, uh, I do not know anybody that reads the log in passive stuff. Passive stuff means that, that we collect all the data and then analyze. Without the penetration testing, without the forensics that we do after, uh, after uh, an breach in the system, I don't know anybody that do that. Active monitoring. Of course, you can configure your Unipers, your Cisco's to raise the red flag if something, uh, something happens in the network, segment after the attack, segment the network to minimize routing possibilities of the attack or completely cut out the MAC address or something. IDS is intrusion detector system, detection system are the same stuff like modification of the firewall with additional rules that keeps handle of all traffic. Uh, we could limit the ARP tables to only route through possible and uh, granted by the IT uh, roads and secure more ARP, the awareness. How many of you met before, except the networking guys, uh, the ARP stuff? Does anybody know about that, existence of it? Okay, next. Second stuff is more fun because based on the attack 
of the ARP poisoning, we could produce a um, DNS poisoning, domain name service poisoning, which basically uh, our application. And that's the intention that I want to say, that I saw many of the applications and maybe three or four verifies their, verified their own checksum and uh, the responses uh, verifies the check some of the traffic that is used. One of them are the mobile banking apps. Only one bank used that, the pink one. But okay, so basically our application resolves our cloud-based storage to get, I want to download some data about my account. Then the DNS query goes um, to the local caching server. <coughs> and then goes to the authoritative DNS server. What happened? We are inside in the network. We are start to flood the network with the ARP queries and also start to flood network with the DNS queries. So in final, there are a couple of applications that can do that. Sorry, a couple, many of them. But not many of them can preserve to identify still as router based on that attack. What happened next? When we get, as a victim, our modified uh, request, then, of course, the routing goes back to the attacker computer, and then it is redirected to the local caching server or authoritative DNS server. Any questions? Yeah? Uh, I can tell you that I used that from my previous presentation. Basically, every operating system is vulnerable to that. Thanks, I will need to correct that. Uh, to countermeasure the attack vector based on the DNS spoofing is a little bit more difficult uh, rather than the ARP. What I saw uh, and the productions on the company, IT companies, that they are using the DNSSEC. DNSSEC is a, let's say, a variable framework of how to configure properly the DNSs. Uh, not so many of the companies use strict DNS routes uh, that um, you can only go through that way to get the domain that you are searching for and construct the route that you want to go. Of course, the configuration of the firewalls, uh, stuff like that. Without it, the IT guys would not know about that somebody is targeting their network, somebody is want to do some evil things inside of it. What does it with mobile? Everything. I will show you this on the demo. And based on that, there are a couple of stuff that as a network engineer or embedded developer, Android, iOS, mobile developer, uh, could use to do that. In Android stuff, it's easy. You could use Androby's uh, code analysis, dynamic APK inspector. Uh, Drozer and Androby's are the coolest stuff to see what is in the <coughs> what is in the application. For iOS, it's hard because if you want to deliver the application, you must pay to get the account on the developer, apple.com. Okay, cool. But if I want to know that, of course, for both of them, of the platforms, also for the Windows, it's possible to spoof. I will tell that in a, uh, in a moment. But to analyze your application, using Snoopit. Snoopit is a cool framework, but you have to jailbreak your device to see what's happened. You're installing the deep uh, DEB packet, then Snoopit starts, and as a web service, you could see what is happening when, while the application is running. Entropy Spy are the similar thing, but you need to jailbreak your device, and yeah, I don't want to. And based on that, what could happen as an attacker could do to your mobile device. 
till Android 4.4, there was that vulnerability, uh, vulnerability to, um, let's say, use Android master key. What does it mean? Basically, it was modifying the Android manifest that there was two Android manifests inside of the APK file. For the installation, our Android was some dump that he read the first installation with the first key, but for the uh, main installation, he used the second Android manifest, which have the privileges for your cell phone, camera, stuff like that. And based on that, uh, many of the applications were targeted. Also, uh, it was falsifying a system update. It's possible. It is easy to use. Come on, it will be fun in a moment. And in final, using that idea that there could be two Android manifest file, uh, of course for the Android 5.0 and Marshmallow, it's not possible, it's not working, but still we can embed an additional application inside the main application. How many of you uh, in your Android phones turned off the application verification, the security? Cool, I congratulate you. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I know it's annoying sometimes, but it helps. Okay, let's switch. Oh, I see a cable. <coughs> what I will do now, I will start my machine. If I would go too fast or uh, somebody would not understand something, just please ask, do not raise your hand, because from this point I do not see everybody, anybody. Yeah, the virtual machine. So maybe some questions you have regarding the uh, PPT, regarding the presentation. You said that it's rather easy to do some DNS uh, redirection to like a malicious server. Yeah. And, uh, for example, someone can, an attacker can set up a, a rogue uh, Facebook uh, website. Yes. Yeah. Because do not popular websites like Facebook that are security aware use uh, HSDS to <laughs> mitigate that? Yes, I know what you are saying, but imagine that, that you will see in a moment that it's possible to modify uh, the header of the web page to uh, downgrade the SSL protocol, for example, that do not use the version 3 or use version 2 or 1.5. And based on that, we could open the traffic using some framework and see what's, it in, what's in it. Uh, yes, there are many uh, online applications that are protected by that, but if somebody is in your network and wants to achieve something, you are doomed. Okay. What I want to show you are combination of two framework. The combination of Python and Ruby uh, framework. One of them is subterfuge. Why I will use that framework? Because I want to show you how easy it is to give in your company, the IT guys, possibility to get diarrhea instantly. What's, what is my... Okay. I will start the framework with the on a specified interface and a specified port, I don't know, 555. God damn. Okay, now you could, could see that, but... Uh, sorry, I need to switch. Where are the key? I didn't expect that. Okay. 
So, okay, I started the subterfuge framework, and I will use the BIF framework, BIF XSS, get them, not this one. Uh, I always forget how to. <coughs> okay, the B framework load up, the subterfuge is on. Based on that, okay, we have network, so we could start. Also, I will start a second machine to. show that. Due to configuration of this CPU that I have in the demo laptop, I could not use the AVD. Uh, so I will use the compilation of the x86 of Android 5. Okay, Android is booting up. Let's go to the frameworks. Basically, Using the subterfuge, subterfuge will poison all network with the ARP entries and inject in every HTTP session that is possible to get an information regarding the script. And the script will be from the BIF framework. Okay, mm, it is easy, it has fine GUI, it's okay. Uh, you can do many attacks of it. I do not want to teach you how to do that. I want to show you how it works. Not, it, not the intention to teach you, but uh, just your security awareness. Okay, so basically, mm, code injection is enabled. I want to use an outside script to inject in every HTTP traffic an additional payload at the end of the web page, which will give me some privileges on the target machine. Based on that, imagine that, that we are in the company network that have, for example, 500 machines connected directly to the production network. We are in the network. We are poisoning the whole network with the ARP entries. I will use custom injection, the script. Mm, what was the IP address? Twenty two, okay. Apply and let's start. Why this subterfuge framework is bad from end user point of view? Because for once the, you could hijack your session based on the cookie file. For example, yeah, you have the full cookie that is currently running. Credential harvester. Basically, this framework opens all traffic that goes on the SSL version 2 and reads the login and password files. Not files, but the, okay. Now I will switch to the BIF framework. Still no, 22. <coughs> okay, so we are in the beef. What beef do is that it injects his own JS file 
and based on that we could do some bad stuff. Okay, so basically we have combined it together with running subterfuge that is injecting the traffic data, but for a moment we do not have any traffic data. And we are using the beef. So let's try, let's switch to the Android. And what will happen if the session will be hijacked in the online browser folder, there will be active session that is currently hijacked and we, then we could do some stuff. For example, for now, I do not say that um, Okay, let's click on something. As you can see, we have Android that is currently hijacked. We know that this is Android 5.1.1 on a virtual box using the Apple WebKit. While I was, was preparing to this presentation, I wanted to do something that is to focus your at, uh, attention on. And one of my colleagues said that, talk about the WebKit, about the HEP, HEP stack uh, overflows. And I said, no, something more fancy and cool that is possible to do. Okay, so we have information about the device that we are currently hacking. Uh, we have the information about the cookie that is gathering our data. What can we do? I will do not show that, but for example, we have social engineering tools, uh, also the framework detects what is possible to do. Based on that, you see what is achievable to do using this attack. How it looks inside of it, of, uh, come on, how the attack looks inside of the network. Yeah, okay. Let's select the, this interface start. You have the HTTP set traffic, the other stuff, but yeah. This is not so common that we see uh, ARP entries on this level. Not so many, but yeah, because this is only one device, so okay. Uh, but based on that, I want to see where is the ARP protocol. Yeah, we have the hijacked session. And the information that we have duplicated ARP entries. Basically, this is the main router, but the subterfuge well, is one of the evil stuff that he will preserve to act inside of the network as an main router. Uh, using that kind of PC or virtual machine, it's hard because if you would put it into, into production network, all the machines that are currently running in the in this network would reroute uh, all stuff through that machine. Basically, you could not open any of the web pages, any of do something else as an end user until the queue on the subterfuge uh, would finish. Okay, basically this is the end of the first demo. Do you have any questions regarding that? Yeah? Yes, it's possible to use the IDSs uh, like uh, Asset Internet Shield. Basically, this is one of the Internet Shields available on the network for the Windows machines, for the, yeah, for the Windows machines that uh, can detect that kind of stuff. Kaspersky, okay, I will do not use the uh, company names, but yeah, the first line of, uh, first line of um, protection are the IDSs. Uh, and second line, 
yeah, the configuration of the network that we are connected to. So imagine that, that somebody would connect to the mobilization network in, and do that stuff. How many of you are connected to that network right now to use it, to tweet, to, to do something? <laughs> okay, cool. Any more so, question? So we could switch to the second demo. I have time still or not? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I will finish on that. Guys, okay, so do you have any questions? Uh, can I use these tools or something other tools to check if, for example, this asset shield works properly? Yes, of course, you could I use it. Because I had one uh, very silly uh, situation uh, that I noticed Arab is spoofing from my TV. Yeah, it's possible. So it's, it's possible, yeah? Yeah, imagine that, that Chinese guys created a malicious uh, malware Malicious malware, okay. Uh, a software that uh, DDoS is distributed the detail of service uh, to every IoT device, every TV, mm -hmm. uh, with the casual stuff that admin admin login. And based on that, every of newer TVs like, uh, yeah, uh, the IoT and uh, ESP8266, it's possible to inject the payload and act as a rook uh, IoT device or a TV. Uh, there was some situation that uh, Samsung company was closed or something or burned and part of the Chinese uh, network was uh, turned off and part of the TVs was not able to connect. So, yeah. Okay. okay. The, the second uh, very general question. What do you think? Uh, when I have a mob uh, mobile phone, mm -hmm. an old Android, is yeah. it okay to root this device to use the newer version and be uh, and to wait for this vulnerability to 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 have or to stay on this uh, older uh, version with this uh, attacks which are very uh, I was saying about that master key vulnerab vulnerability mm -hmm. uh, you should upgrade above Android 4.4. Um, basically, uh, in the Android 6, in the Marshmallow, was uh, changed the policy that is handling mm -hmm. the permissions. But, but this is very, very common situation that the, the companies uh, don't uh, release this upgrade. So, yeah, but you can cook your own ROM or just yeah, mm -hmm. give it to kids to use YouTube. So, so yeah, it's, it's better to. Yeah, and especially if you use your banking app on that uh, cell phone, it's very dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other? Yeah. Is mobile internet safer? Or it also has some vulnerabilities? Every network has vulner vulnerabilities. But it's better to use mobile data? Yeah, it's better to use... Uh, I teach uh, my friend from Mobica, when he saw this kind of attack, he switched to always use his own AP to connect to the data. He even do not use <laughs> uh, Mobica internal uh, network, only switch to the mobile data, but yeah. Uh, can you provide some examples of attacks on mobile phones? We I will give data. you my card and we could discuss this later because yeah, I have okay. one minute. <laughs> okay. And see you at the party. Thanks.